The center is number 42, Bob McEwen. Before the CBC, I had the CFL. Casada takes the snap from his Yale center, Bob McEwen. Now a very personal story about brain injury in Canadian football. During my playing career, I had several concussions but none more profound than the one that took place right here at Lansdowne Park. My friends and I never worried what was happening inside our heads. I saw this mysterious disease take Rod's capacity one day, one month, one year at a time. There's Tracy finishing it. It's a deadly problem the CFL wants to ignore, but we can't. Now, you may not have known that about Bob's past. He was a top football player with a 1973 Grey Cup ring to attest to that, and it was all before he became a top investigative journalist. Tomorrow night, he combines both in that report. But this morning, Bob's here to talk about the report and to share a significant personal decision. Great of you to come in this morning. Good morning. What have you decided to do? I have decided to donate my brain to concussion science. when I die, when I no longer yeah, need it, hopefully something uh, to much be determined, in the future. Uh, it'll go to the Canadian Sports Concussion Project, which is at Toronto Western Hospital. With Dr. Tatter. Uh, yes, uh, run by Charles Tatter. Uh, Lilinaz Hazrati is actually the neuropathologist who does the autopsies of the brain. So far, I think they've got 32 that they're looking at. And uh, their, their point is really to look for chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, for obvious reasons. Uh, which is something that can only be determined in a post-mortem autopsy. Mm -hmm. And the statistics are staggering. In the United States, where they've got a head start here, they've studied so far 94 brains of former NFLers. 90 have shown the presence of CTE, 96%. So far in Canada, it's about 33 and a third percent. But still, a third of CFL players get CTE by that measure? That's an exaggeration, but you get the point. It's a, it's a troubling more. statistic. For you, the decision, though, to come to that announcement, which you're just announcing, as I said, online and here, for you to reach that, for you and your family to come to that decision, talk about the thought process. It, it really has more to do with my teammates and myself, really? Heather. Um, you know, when you play it as I did, you get to this point, and you've got a long list of friends who are mostly your teammates mm-hmm. who are suffering from dementia in one form or another, ALS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and and, and CTE, in many cases dying from them. Uh, The latest studies that I've seen show that, again, based on an NFL study, but I don't see why it would be significantly different Mm -hmm. in Canada, uh, show that uh, of uh, people who played at least five years of pro football, I played five, they are three times more likely to die from ALS, Alzheimer's, uh, CTE or another brain degenerative brain disorder mm-hmm. and that's that's very troubling it really is you were center you call it in your online piece head-to-head combat <laughs> so you were really in the line of fire and you had you said over the course of your I mean think about that high yeah. school college at Yale CFL career maybe as many as a dozen concussions yeah and those were serious concussions I'm sure I had dozens of other minor ones that I didn't even recognize at a point I, I defined a serious one as when it happened to me, I would feel as if I was floating above the stadium, watching myself play down there. Really? And it all unfolded in slow motion. I actually had the impression that I could anticipate what was going to happen and get to the right place sooner, quicker, because I was seeing it this way. And that was because I was concussed. You played better with a concussion. That was At least my, you thought. That was Isn't my that impression. extraordinary? But the thing about it back then is we didn't use the word concussion. I don't think mm-hmm. I even heard the word concussion. Certainly. Was it a dinger? Well, yeah, there there were euphemisms, you got your your bell rung. Uh, No one talked to you about your brain. No one asked about head injuries unless you lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then they'd take you off the field and put you on the the sideline and they'd wave some smelling salts under your nose and they'd ask you what day it was or how many fingers am I holding up. And when you could answer those skill testing questions, you you got sent back out in the field. We never told anybody. You know, uh, the the worst concussion I had was uh, in the Eastern Final against the Hamilton Tiger Cats one year. And Mark Cosmos, who eventually became my teammate, and we won the 73 Grey Cup together, Mark was the middle linebacker for the Ticats. And he just literally beat me up. Think Joe Frazier in the Thrilla in Manila. <laughs> he used his forearm, which was legal then, to hit me in the head every play. Really? And I threw up all night. I had a blinding headache for the next week. But I didn't tell the trainer. I didn't tell the doctor. Certainly never mentioned it to the coaches. Because the feeling was, 
it was an invisible injury. I was the only one who knew I had it. Mm -hmm. And the fear would be that if you were complaining about something no one else could see, that you'd lose your job eventually. So that was then. Now, of course, we know so much more. Mm -hmm. And you have seen, as you just said, fellow players really failed by this disease, failed by diseases, struggling with this. What about for you? I mean, thankfully, well, I mean, I see you all the time. I mean, yeah. symptoms, you show any signs of anything that's concerning to you? Not that I'm aware. Okay. But do I worry about the future? I'd be crazy not to. I have close friends whom I see on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and I've seen their slide into dementia over the past number of years. I did the same thing with my head that they did with their heads. So I, it, it would be uh, irrational, I think, for me not to wonder what's going on in there. And that's, that's another one of the motivations for ultimately giving my brain. I may I not be so. here to know what is going on in there, but someone else will. I thought that must be something you must, you know, not necessarily front burner, but certainly in the back, you know, the, rea the sort of Damocles, you know, hanging over. Absolutely. Could that and, something and, you know, happen? We get to a point where mm -hmm. some vagary mm -hmm. is age appropriate. Yeah. Uh, I like to think I can still function at a high level. Well, you Let are. me know if you see something. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting in the piece, we're going to meet some of the people that, that Bob is referring to. Rod Woodward, somebody who lost his life. Mm -hmm. They're thinking in conjunction with this. There's a lawsuit before the CFL. You're going to learn about the CFL and how it is responding or not to this yes. issue. Um, contrary to what the NFL is doing, this is all part of the Fifth Estate piece that you'll see tomorrow night. At the end of it all, I mean, you said it's, it's after your death, you won't know the impact. But by coming forward and telling your story, airing, sharing your concerns, and, and bringing this forward in this way and making this decision, what do you hope to contribute, Bob? Simply that the Canadian Football League face up to it. You know, they're, they're, they've made real strides in terms of rules, in terms of concussion protocols for the current players, whom they call their greatest asset. Mm -hmm. And that's true. They've done nothing to try to establish what the problem is statistics, define who the victims are for former players. And it's truly an existential issue, not mm -hmm. only for the CFL, but for all of football, from peewees to the pros. For a, a man like Jeffrey Orge, the CFL commissioner, to say, as he has, he's not familiar with the health problems of former players. Uh, I think he should, he should be familiar with what is the fundamental issue facing his sport today. As your piece ends online, he should come and talk to people like you, you could tell. We're here. Read it online and, of course, be watching tomorrow night. Hopefully, this will be something you don't confront ever yeah. far off in the future. But thank you. That's pretty courageous Thanks, to come forward and talk about it and appreciate your doing so this morning, Bob McEwen. Now, again, you can read about it online and hope you take the time to do so and think about it. CBCnews.ca, that's our website. And more on the Fifth Estate tomorrow night with Bob McEwen.